when I was a teen, I used to watch a lot of cringe compilations. I think that's where my fascination with odd, weird people comes from. The more I binge watch them, the more compassion and sympathy I gained for the people in the videos, because a lot of them were simply either different or just didn't seem to know any better. The worst cringe compilations are those that include kids. Young people being happy and having fun isn't cringe. You're an actual loser if you think so. The cream of the crop of cringe videos are those that really make you feel. The ones that are actual cringe and inexcusable, but those are pretty rare. In my life, I have had my fair share of cringe moments that I now cherish. I remember I once ate at a pizzeria with my friends while wearing Naruto headbands. Looking back at it, it is kind of cringy, but it's also fun to reminisce. The beauty of childlike innocence. Since I have this interest in oddballs, it comes to no surprise to know that I've been lurking in the shadows of pill, manosphere, incel communities for a long time. I'm talking pre-mainstream. Don't get it twisted. I'm not part, nor was I, or ever will be part of those communities. I am certifiably immune to their propaganda due to the fact that my father taught me from a very young age to think for myself and I have interacted with the real world. That includes interacting with girls. Believe it or not, I even managed to raise up some girls while being built like an industrial sized washing machine. I'm just a simple twink smacking Vietnamese boy fascinated by weirdos. Although these communities are different, they share a great deal of similarities that I think it's fair to lump them all together. I will address their more distinctive points more directly later on. In my professional opinion, these communities are composed of two types of creatures. The first is orcs. Orcs have and will continue to exist forever in the world. They are either born this way or are so far deep into their beliefs that helping them is close to a fool's errand. As the Elder Kai said, the inevitability of his existence does not give meaning to what he does. The second type, who I think is by far the most common one, is goblins. Goblins are predominantly young, normal people who are lost and confused. It's their way of thinking that's bad, not themselves. They are made this way, whether it's for valid reasons or not. They can be helped and should be helped, otherwise they will turn into orcs. I have compassion for the goblins because I too am one. A witch put a curse on me back in 2013, turning me into one. So my goblin genes make me sympathetic towards them. I am known as King Goblin around my burrow, infamous for my nefarious limericks and mastery of the black arts. Just last week I had to turn my 79 year old kindergarten teacher to a darn frog. It is my royal duty to help out younger gobbos to not let their outlook on life fade away. Why are young people so infatuated by the manosphere? Why are the pills in manosphere bad? What can be done to help? Why do I oppose these movements so much? Pills in manosphere aren't targeting women or more mature men. It's young and experienced guys that are looking for guidance and searching for manhood. That's the main audience. To me, the red pill promotes cynicism. Black pill is fatalistic and nihilistic. Let's be honest, manosphere is mostly a joke. I'll go on that bit a bit later. These are not mindsets that should be promoted, especially to younger people whose lives are just starting to begin. Even back when I was emo, I was never a big fan of this way of thinking. Don't you find it funny how most protagonists from famous stories are opposed to these mindsets while the villains tend to associate themselves with them? Why think the worst of people because of some bad apples? Pessimism is death. What's the point of eating this tasty little pie cooling up the windowsill if we're all gonna die? Motherfucker, go to a monster truck show, live life. Giving up and spreading that message like a virus is wrong. Do not let bad experience sour your view on life or you'll be prone to rot. You can't give up. Not only can you not give up, you cannot start to believe that others can't. It didn't work for me, therefore it won't work for you. There's no use in trying. Don't put your fucking foot in my Burger King lettuce, bro. This is such a loser thing to do, and I mean it. I couldn't win at this game, therefore you shouldn't even try. Quit while you're ahead. Bro, first of all, I'm built different. You're not me. Secondly... What makes you believe that we have the same hand of cards? I could have a full house while you only had a pair of two. Let's say you, and let's say you were right, and I end up losing. So what? Are you gonna bask in my failure? Open your eyes and realize we are both in the same boat. You're laughing at yourself. We are not different. We both tried and failed. We're both lost at sea. The only difference is that I decided to continue to swim. You decided to drown. You decided to lose. I haven't won yet. Truth is, you can still try. This isn't a one-time thing. We can try as many times as needed. 
Having this never give up shonen protagonist like mentality is by no means easy to cultivate. I'm still working on it myself. Still, to me at least, what are the choices out there? Giving up? To vegetate? Existing only to exist? To live a life not worth living? This is not the world I want to live in, nor is it the world I want to leave. I cannot stand to sit idly by as morons ruin the youth and the potential of a beautiful life they could live. One thing, and this is, I'm asking this particularly of young people that watch. Please do not be cynical. I hate cynicism. For the record, it's my least favorite quality. It doesn't lead anywhere. Nobody in life gets exactly what they thought they were going to get. But if you work really hard and you're kind, amazing things will happen. I'm telling you, amazing things will happen. I'm telling you, it's just true. Let's get the duck out of the water. <laughs> yes, not everything in these movements are bad. They promote going to the gym, being financially smart, to chat up, and much more. I obviously have nothing against any of these things, right? They're great advice that everyone should be doing. This is used to justify the existence of these movements. Promoting these uh, healthy life choices is a great look. However, it needs to be acknowledged that these pieces of actual genuine advice were never inventions of the manosphere or any of these guys. It's all common knowledge. You don't need bold men to tell you this. It's not even advice exclusive for young Sigma males like me. It's good advice from women, or anyone for that matter. The reason why they sprinkle actual advice into their doctrine is to legitimize themselves. This is how they get you. For example, the Lever King had its nine ancestral tenants, which were common advice covered in a Flintstone coat of paint. He basically said, sleep good, eat good, be good, be in nature, based. And that's it. Again, all great advice. <laughs> But he also used to claim he was a natty, so you follow in his footsteps and maybe even bought, you know, one of his supplements or two. You could be just like him. So why would they create this fake reality? Money. You are money. Remember this for the rest of your life. Never trust anyone blindly. Especially those who you don't know, like celebrities or online personalities. Only give your trust to those who you feel you can trust. Don't even trust me, dude. Just because I make nice videos, and I seem nice, and funny, and cute, and charming, and smart, and I have the big... It doesn't automatically mean I am a nice guy. I'm not self-reporting. I am... A, I'm, I mean, I'm okay, I guess. More importantly, it doesn't even mean I'm trustworthy. Believe it or not, the guy who decided to skip a party, my friend was throwing, because Super Smash Bros. for Wii U was releasing on the same day, and that guy really wanted to play as Pac-Man. He's not a person of authority. Everything I say is with anyone you don't know especially on the internet, should be taken into consideration and not as absolute truths. I don't want you to become cynical. Far from it. Please do not become cynical. Cynicism is pessimism's cousin. Treat everyone you meet on an individual level and don't rely too much on generalizations. I want you to be prudent because there are people out there who cannot be trusted and the reality of the world is that most of it is gray. Always think for yourself. That's your greatest tool. Ask yourself, why would I trust them? Because they're older? Well, just because someone's older, it doesn't automatically mean that they have gained sageness or wisdom. There are old dumb fucks out there. They do have more experience. Whether they learn anything of value from them is another. Because you see them as role figures? Boom. Here are far better role figures than any of these mech boys. Far better. Because they have money and power? And you know, you know, uh, <laughs> you know who else had money and power? When looking at what these bold ass balls are preaching with clearer skies, you realize the good they're saying is nothing revolutionary that you can get anywhere. While the other <laughs> while the other is weird. Plain weird. The greatest hurt you can cause someone who is desperate or lives off of attention is to ignore them. Don't acknowledge their existence. Move on. Some of their teachings can really be damaging not only to you, but to others as well. Ask yourself this. Why would I destroy myself for them? Looks maxing is, for the most part, good. I'm not sure about the whole plastic surgery solution. Too little problems. It should be really only used for medical reasons like an underbite or a deviated septum. 
Nevertheless, teaching skin care, styling, personal hygiene, and much more is really good. It's cool that taking care of yourself is now more accepted in men. I always find it super stupid that taking care of yourself was seen as girly. I did it anyways. I didn't care what people thought. Have fun looking like a dried raisin when you're in your 30s, dude. I'm still gonna have my femboy glow. So if the reason why your looks maxing is to look the best you can for yourself, in congruence with your style and aesthetic, I wish you luck in your journey. Where people need to be careful with is with the hyperfixation of looking like a chad. If you have the bone structure and everything else to look like a chad and you want that, go for it, bro. If not, you're only gonna suffer. Most people don't have the facial structure of a chad. Speaking for myself, try as hard as I may, I will never look like that. I have a more youthful look. I could go under the knife, of course, but I could very well end up hating how I look. My friends wouldn't recognize me. I wouldn't recognize myself. This wouldn't be the face my mother used to love. But just for argument's sake, let's say I do end up looking like a Chad, right? I I've become the black Henry Campbell. Well, what now? Am I truly happy? Why did I do this in the first place? And that is the question at the end of the day. Why? I walk a lot. Like... To the point that my beefy thighs can hydro-press a toddler's head. Shout out to my four-year-old nephew, Matumbo, who lost a bet and now has to breathe through a tube. So I have seen my fair share of faces. For the past two months especially, I took notice of people's attractiveness like a fucking psycho. I just for this video, bro. My brain isn't damaged by social media's unrealistic beauty standard. For reference, to me, a five is good. Okay, you're, you're okay. So I think I have a pretty alright judgment of beauty. Bear in mind, I am a straight white male, so obviously I'm gonna have a bias to think women are prettier and men are chimps. With all that being said, most people I saw were, surprise, surprise, average, aka not ugly. Those who were ugly weren't even that ugly, to be honest. They were either just overweight or they didn't style themselves properly, which thankfully is something that can't be changed. They were the outliers, uh, like a couple of hot god girls I did see, or some guys that looked like genuine soy boys or stereotypical discord moderators even though what i'm saying is not controversial or hard to believe take it out with a grain of salt i am a straight orange marsupial after all but just using simple logic most people should be average you watching this video are most likely average so for the average person aiming for this idealized almost fantastical idea of the perfect face overemphasizes every little imperfection you have which can lead to body image problems it creates problems out of nothing for a normal, okay face. All this bigonial, hunter eyes, white neck, long neck shit is fucking weird. Unless it's for a meme, if you know all of these terms, you're in too deep, bro. If you go outside, you will never hear anyone using this lingo or noticing these traits, at least consciously. Except for me, ironically doing it, because I know how skits it sounds. If you can't look like Chad, that doesn't mean you're ugly. Play to your strengths and find your aesthetic. Just like how women have different types of archetypes they can fit in, from gamine to femme fatale and everything else, men also have that. If you're a cat, you don't aim to look like a fucking dolphin. Look, if you really want to look like a chad, go for it, bro. I just don't want you to be tied to this idea that this is the only way to be a man or the only way to look like a man. Remember, improve yourself mainly to feel better about yourself, to gain confidence, and to be treated better by people. Also, you know, it girls. Let's be honest. Looking like a chat is highly overrated anyways. My army? Join my <laughs> join my army of sundry twinks, bro. And here comes the big boy. Get ready for some of the basest shit you'll ever hear, bro. The pills. Oh, shit. The pills in the manosphere. One thing that gets on my nerves, because it's crazy how people are so accepting of, is their views of femininity. What is femininity? Femininity. Well, according to them, trains that are feminine include emotional, weak, irrational, manipulative, delusional, defensive, disloyal, oversensitive, impulsive, dumb bitch. <laughs> These are not feminine traits, okay? These are negative human traits that can apply to women just as much as men. But especially to my ex-wife. Right. Empathetic, sensible, nurturing, sweet, kind, supportive, tender, gentle, passive and expressive are traditional stereotypical feminine traits. Is being perceived as feminine really such a bad thing then? Men should want to have these traits. Devaluating femininity is damaging and is not gonna put more value on masculinity. Aren't these guys supposed to like women bro? These f 
fuck out. Love to think that they left the Matrix, but really are slaves to social constructs. Let's say tomorrow it is now considered feminine by society to like cars, a male perceived interest. Are they gonna go with the flow because of society or will they question it? They wouldn't because a part of their identity relies on social constructs and social perception. They're not punks, they're not free thinkers. Things like long hair, baking, gardening, nail polish or wanting a mojito being perceived as feminine are inconsequential social constructs that they partake in without thinking, just like everyone else. But not me though, bro. I'm the only human being with uh, free will. Now you can say something like, girls don't like men that paint their nails. Bro, is that all you can think about? Girls? What about what you like? Me and my homies like being cute, bro. I don't blame red pillars too much for putting such an emphasis on girls though, because the red pill itself puts the emphasis on it. Specifically, how to get laid as much as possible. The pills associate women with sex almost exclusively. First of all, if I were a girl, that would make me feel so empty. Like, is that all I'm good for? It's really gross. Secondly, they advocate for not watching corn and shit like that. All the while, they view women as sexual objects in their kuma rotting brains. Not very consistent now. Their views of women are so warped because they talk to or talk about these vapid, dumb, superficial individuals. Then they act as if that's women in general. Unironic actual propaganda. This way of thinking is not only damaging to women, it's gonna damage your ability to build interpersonal relationships with women. The only thing they're right about is that men in general are stronger physically than men. I 1v5 my YMCA's local women's basketball league, bro. Every Friday night. I dunk on women. I break the backboard like Big Shaq. I am undefeated in the boxing ring. That'll teach him to say, Do you know where the women's shut up, bitch? <laughs> she does say that. Pushing this women are superficial beings agenda further divides us and reinforces the belief that women and men are vastly different. We are different, mainly physiologically but not remarkably so otherwise. If you are a part of these movements or communities, I'm not saying you're this type of person or anything like that, because I don't know you. Maybe you are normal, and you just subscribe to some of their ideas. Even then, I feel it's best to get away from them, because sooner or later, the abyss will find you. Labeling yourself a part of these groups is gonna put imaginary barriers in your life. I'm not gonna approach that cute girl, because I'm red-pilled and she most likely has a huge body count. Or I have no shot with her because I'm a sub-5. The world isn't gonna stop you. You will. It's like that quote. We suffer more in our imaginations, more often than in reality. It's also not a good look. If my friend tomorrow, Max the Big Bastard, joins the VC and tells us, Guys, I'm an incel. Bruh, that would break my heart. That fucker doesn't even know what base means. I hope I made you at least question their talking points. Think about your mom. If she were a young lady today, would you want her to live in a world where she would be treated like shit by red pillars and alpha males? One rainy morning, I was walking with my dad. I don't know where we were going. Me and my dad never really hung out that much. It was kind of awkward, but whatever. I was happy to be with my dad. Then out of nowhere, this dude asked me, can you describe your sister, Bobby? Bro, she's your daughter. What the fuck do you mean? You know, you're better than I do, bro. Kinda weird, but whatever, I said something really vague like, I guess she's nice. My father got kinda irritated at my answer, so this fucking guy, at like 9 in the morning, decides to give me an Attack on Titan Irwin ass speech about the importance of being, the meaning of being, to think for yourself and to have imagination. By the way, I was like fucking 10 years old, bro. He gave me the greatest lesson of my life at an age when I was still trying to do Rasengans with my friends in the back alley. So that left a mark on me. And it opened my eyes. After that point, I started to question pretty much everything. And that led to discussion with my dad. I like that. There's one question that has stumped me for the longest time. Since this topic is quite popular and controversial today, I have to emphasize. I don't have an agenda to push. From a very young age, I have had this question. And that question is, what is a man? Note, I'm not talking physically, obviously. No sexual dimorphism. I'm not talking what's in your pants either. I don't give a shit. I mean what it is, what it means to be a man, and how it differs from being a woman. Forget superficiality or preconceived notions, no big beard, big truck, big boy, no dresses, long hair, feminine figure. Realistically, it is really hard to talk about this without taking into account physical differences. Our differences are based on gender roles, and those are based on our biological differences. What it means to be a man, tradition speaking, is something like strong, confident, resourceful, brave, to protect, to be a role model, 
someone others can look up to. Although I do agree that this is a great way of being a man, I think that this is just simply a good way to be a good human being. Thus, it also applying to women. I would want my daughter to have all the qualities I listed. Many of our differences are societal creations or cultural differences and are not inherent. I don't think there's a definitive way of being a man, nor a woman, nor black, or anything for that matter. The Gender Similarities Hypothesis by Jen Shibley Hyde from the University of Wisconsin-Madison explores the preconceived notion that men and women are different. I'll use the article from the American Psychological Association because it greatly summarizes its findings. To quote the article, Hyde observed that across the dozen of studies consistent with the gender similarities hypothesis, gender differences had either no or a very small effect on most of the psychological variables examined. Only a few main differences appeared. Compared with women, men could throw father, were more physically aggressive, were more physically aggressive with their meat, and held more positive attitudes about sex in uncommitted relationships. The study looked at a lot of stuff, 128 stuff to be exact. 78% of the differences were small or close to zero. The two big ones were biological, which were thrown distance and velocity. Now this bit is really interesting and something to think about. In various experiments, it was shown that if the participants were de-individualized, meaning to be made anonymous, the participants would not act stereotypically. They would not conform to social norms. One experiment on aggression found that men acted more passively and women a bit more aggressively. In a math experiment debunking the girl suck at math meme, in the group that was told the test had shown gender differences in the past, women underperformed. Whereas the group that was told the test was gender fair, they both did equally good. So this all seems nice and dandy, right? Case closed, we're not different at all. But remember what I said in the prologue? Do not blindly trust me. When doing videos like this, you can get lost in the sauce and only find evidence to support your claims while never searching or ignoring the evidence that goes against it. Meaning that if I had an agenda to push, I could create this little cute one-sided narrative. Look, there's three other studies I found that somewhat go against what I said. Though they go into personality, which is not something I really talked about. Go read them though. I'm not going to give you their synopsis. Believe it or not, I fucking hate talking about studies, okay? I have to read them and I don't have the attention span to do so, right? Blame the TikTok brain. I just want to play, let me play Resident Evil, bro. But due to the nature of these videos, I kind of have to put up studies because I don't want to speak nonsense. But this is the reason why I was able to read the gender similarities hypothesis. Unlike most studies that I try to read, it's actually very readable and concise. I recommend reading it. I'll put links to all the studies mentioned in the description below, as always. I'm just letting you know, this is not written in stone and it's up for debate. These things are very, very, very complex. I still believe in what I said. This whole video is my opinion after all. Whether you agree with me or not moving on, that's up to you. With all that in mind, so <laughs> what was the point of that rambling? <laughs> well, I just don't want you to be chained to social expectations. Remember, at the end of the day, you are a human being. It's fine to be traditional and it's fine to try new things. Just be sure to be you. I want you to be you. I want you to be. I think that's what everyone wants. But most people are, uh, I feel, are afraid of being themselves. So they try chasing this image of a different, more acceptable person. A girl wanting to be a tomboy, but afraid of the reaction she will get, tries to fit in and opts instead for dresses and skirts. You're not that guy, pal, and you know it. My opinion, deep down, inherently. You kind of have an idea of who you are, or at the very least, who you want to be, especially the older you get. It can change with time for sure, drastically or not, but at that moment in time, you know who you were. This question has fascinated me for the longest time. How much of myself was shaped by others? How much of me really is me? I don't think you need someone to tell you who you are or what you need to be. You know what you like, what you want to look like, and who you want to be like. If you're not, then feel free to be inspired by others. Artists, parents, friends. You're bound to stumble across yourself just by living life. Tricky part comes with the ability to fully accept who you are. It's quite a scary thing to truly be yourself because you're showing the world, yup, this is me, unfiltered, and for the first time, people will see your real face. You're vulnerable. You could end up being misunderstood, ridiculed, or worst of all, treated differently by those close to you. And that cut will begin to pour a vivid color because they've slid your real skin. To be accepted for who you are without judgment must feel like heaven. You need to take the risk. You can't wait for the perfect time, 
but that perfect time might never come. You don't want to regret not taking a risk for a happier future. Coming to terms with yourself, freeing your skin, that's the real pill to swallow. Did you see Stephen Hawking was in the logs? That's something. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. I don't want to lubricate the glizzy too much. But thank you so much for everyone for the support. I gained like a billion subscribers. I'm, I'm so glad. Thank you very much. I'm gonna keep up the good work. I've seen some past comments and some of them only mentioned that I should try to add music. I really tried to in this video, but it didn't really work out. Would you guys really want music? I don't know. To me, the silence fits the Zoomer videos. Oh yeah, well, the next Zoomer video is coming very, very soon because it's actually... Well, I'm not gonna say anything, you know, but I, <clears throat> you know, it's coming. Um, yeah, have a good day, bro. I hope uh, you see Stephen Hawking's was. <laughs>